Hello there and welcome. Katsu is in my opinion the most fun deck in the game and the perfect hero to learn the game on. So today I'm gonna tell you all about him, which cards you need to play him and his play pattern. So let's jump right in. Katsu's ability reads as follows. The first time an attack action card you control hits this turn, you may discard a card with cost zero. If you do, search your deck for a card with combo, banish it, then shuffle. You may play it this turn. This means zero cost cards are very important in Katsu and also we want to go quite wide. So we want to start with an attack, follow up with another one and then probably hit one of those, discard a card from our hand, grab the, the exact right card and play a third attack. To do so, we need quite specific cards. The strongest is Bonds of Ancestry. Every Katsu deck will play this card and at least six of them. Bonds of Ancestry, just from the numbers, isn't quite impressive, but if you play a card with the name Gustwave in front of it, and we'll get to that in a second, it becomes insanely strong. You'll be able to banish a card from your graveyard and search for a card from your deck that has the same name. Which cards you want to play in your deck to, to target with Bonds of Ancestry we'll get to as well. But for now, let's keep this in here and look at what Gustwave does. For the gust waves, there are two different ones, the descendant gust wave and the whelming gust wave. Descendant gust waves have got go again, whelming don't have go again naturally, you would need to play a card in front of those. So a common play pattern would be to play a descendant gust wave and then follow up it up with a bunch of ancestry from your hand and then you banish a card with bunch of ancestry and play a third. Um, if you play Descendant or Whelming Gustwave before the Bonds of Ancestry, they don't cost anything and they get Gorgon. So we also want to add the Whelming and the Descendant Gustwaves in another color. For the Descendant Gustwaves we add the yellow ones because they are also strong to attack with. And for the Whelming Gustwaves we add the blue ones because they are really flexible. As I said, we need zero costs in Katsu and they not only discard for Katsu, they are also blue pitches. So a perfect match. Now let's look into our payoff so Bonds of Ancestry. So as I've been saying, after you play Descendant Gustwave, you can play Bonds of Ancestry. You don't have to pay anything and you get to put a card from your graveyard into your banish and search for it out of your deck. The cards we're searching for are, for example, Flusterfist. They say 0 for 4, which is extremely high rate in this game. And we also want to add those in blue. Now we have a lot more Flusterfists in our deck and the chance of one of them landing in our graveyard is pretty high and that is obviously required so we can target them with Bonds of Ancestry. Now a common play pattern would be pitch one to play Descendant Gustwave from our hand, play the Bonds of Ancestry afterwards, have a Flusterfist in our graveyard, banish that, search for one from our deck and play it. Another target for our Bonds of Ancestry is 100 wins. It is only 0 for 3, not 0 for 4, but it has go again. And there is a really nice blue card that synergizes with it. Again, a blue card that blocks for 3 and costs 0, so perfect for Katsu. And this one says if you already played a 100 wins, it gets plus 2. And if it would hit, you can also shuffle your 100 wins back into your deck. The last big Bonds of Ancestry target is called Dishonor. And this honor says that if Bonds of Ancestry was the last attack you played this combo chain, it gets plus two. So you would play the Gust Wave, the ones, banish this honor, get this honor from your deck, and instantly play it. And it will come for the cost of zero and attack for four. It can also do quite a bit more, but we'll get to that in a second. First, I will tell you what Searching Strike does. Searching Strike is, some would argue, the second best card in Katsu. It's a 2 for 5 and we will also play the yellow ones which are 2 for 4. And if we play one of those and follow it up with a gust wave, the gust wave gets a buff. So our descendant gust wave would cost nothing to play and also get plus 2. So it would come in for 0 for 5 which is extremely high rate in flesh and blood. And now we also unlock our other Gust Wave, the Whelming one, which gets go again if Searching Strike was the last attack this combo chain. 
it does not only get go again, it also gets plus one and the on hit that if it hits, it draws a card, which is obviously extremely strong. Now a common play pattern could be a searching strike from our hand, have Whelming Gust with on our hand, play it next, and then maybe one of those hits, we can discard a zero cost, get our Bonds of Ancestry from the deck, play Bonds of Ancestry, maybe we have a hundred wins in our graveyard already, banish that, search for another hundred wins, play the hundred wins. So we paid only two for the searching strike, only had two of the pieces in hand, and we forced our opponent to block quite a bit and even then get some damage. Because searching strike is that strong, we are also playing be like water. That's a zero for three go again that if it hits, can get the name searching strike. Therefore it just fills the same purpose and it forces our opponent to block. Because once again, even if that would hit, we would just get the cards to trigger. And as the last card for our core, we want to get Ancestral Empowerment. Ancestral Empowerment is our first attack reaction. And it all just says, give an your attack action plus one and draw a card. The interesting thing about this is that it's not enough for our opponents to block free on the be like water. If they really want to deny us doing our thing, they actually need to block four here. And it's the same on our searching strike as well. And even on our whelming gust wave. That means if they are greedy and only block 4 and we get to pump it to 5, we get to draw 2 cards, one from the Ancestral Empowerment and one from the Whelming Gas Wave. Now let's look into equipment that's necessary for Katsu. You want to play at least one of those masks, even the mask, either the Mask of Momentum or, or if you don't want to pay too much, starting out with only the Mask of the Pouncing Links is fine as well. Actually, most of the Katsus at the moment play this mask in nearly every matchup and you can actually potentially play it in all matchups. Mask of the Pouncing Link says that once per game you can destroy it if you are attack hit and you can search for a card with a base of two or less attack. How that gets used we'll get to later. The Mask of Momentum, we'll put it in the sideboard for now, says that if the third attack in a row hit you can draw a card and this is only a once per turn effect so not even once per game. To round out our hero, we also need some weapons. And the one weapon Katsus always want to play is Harmonized Kodachi. It's just a one for one go again if you pitch the zero cost card. So once again, our blue zero cost become very important. And now a potential play pattern could be pitch a blue zero cost, attack with the Kodachi twice. So you hit twice, then you play a be like water. And if they don't block it completely and you hit, you get to draw a card from your Mask of, the, of Momentum. Kodachis are also really good to just get rid of some spare mana or if you blocked a lot you can just go in and trade one card of your hand for two damage that the opponent is unlikely to block. Often Katsu wants to block with lots of his hands and wait for the perfect one to attack his opponent and this way with blocking three and just pitching one you can already leak some damage and maybe have him down to 30 when you're, whenever you're going to do your big turn. The next cheap piece of equipment has a very high value is Breaking Scales. Breaking Scales is a, an attack reaction similar to Ancestral Empowerment, where it just says, give you attack plus one. And you can do this whenever, but one, only once in a game. This way, you already force your opponent to overblock cards like the Whelming Gust with by one though. Next one in the list is Breeze Rider Boots. It's quite a solid equipment and every Katsu should play it. For what exactly you want to use it, I'd recommend you look into the gameplay on my channel though. To round things out, we either want to play the Tunic, but for everyone that doesn't want to pay that much, I recommend playing Heart and Cross Trap and once again, at the moment most Katsu play this card over the Tunic anyways. And because we also need to be able to defend ourselves against Wizards, we want to play some Arcane Barrier, Put this into our inventory, we put this into our inventory. And we put this into our inventory. And whenever you're going to face a wizard, you just switch out your hands, your legs and one of your Kodachis for those. Now you're basically equipped to already win a armory with Katsu. The rest of the cards are not necessary, they're just nice to adapt to your local meta game. First of all, we are going to put in Command and Conquer. Once again, if you don't want to pay that much for a card, something like 
humble or even amnesia are just fine. Amnesia would be really good if there are many ninjas in your meta. Humble is very nice if there are many chaos for example or even azaleas. Maybe Fies, Dromais and so on. Then we also want to play some D-Reacts. Those are great against Azalea and then we also want to play some D-Reacts. Those are great against Azalea or Bravo and so on. And you can actually bring them in against a lot of other matchups too because they are one card that blocks for four. I'm gonna put in the sink Billows. If there are many ninjas at your local armory, I would recommend going with Flick Flack. Then I also like to play Reinforce the Line against, once again, Azalea and, and Bravo. They tend to dominate with their attacks, but you would still be able to play this instant to block those out. To round out our blues, we want to put in cards like Warm Warmonger's Diplomacy. Once again, those are really good against certain matchups like Azalea and Runeblades. But Cuts has many more great options. We can go for Ancestral Harmony, for example. And we also want to play a blue bonds of ancestry if we remember what mask of the pouncing links does we are able to search for a card with power two or less and if we're doing a combo and don't have the bonds or maybe we need the second bonds of ancestry we would just be able to search for this now to round things out we want to put a few more power cards in here art of war is one of those art of war allows us to just have our attacks do one more damage and whenever we play lots of attacks for example five in one turn that equates to quite a bit of more more damage that we can get into our opponent's face now three other cards that fare well with the mask of the bouncing links one is salt the wound want to put one of those in and then we want to put two tenacities in tenacity is great against all those decks that block a lot which could be Guardian, which could be Warrior. And the way we play it is that at the end of a chain, if one of our attacks hits and they already blocked a lot, we will use our Mask of the Pouncing Links, get a Tenacity, and then we are allowed to play this and it will come in for maybe 6, maybe 8 damage. Now to round out everything, we have a few spots left. So I might want to put in another Yellow Whelming Gust Wave because it's quite a strong card. And once again, it doesn't hurt to have one of those in the graveyard early, so we want to have a few more cards of those in our deck. We could also put in another 100 wins for the exact same reason. And then I also like to add Oasis Respite to have an even better matchup against Kano. You just want one of those to put into your arsenal, and then you're safeguarded against this combo. And that's basically the whole Katsu deck you want to play. As I said, there are very viable alternative options to all those expensive cards Katsu plays. And his core is basically very cheap. There are only very few Majestics like Dishonor and Ancestral Empowerment in here that you should play. And the rest of it, like Bonds of Ancestry, which is arguably the best card in this deck, is a, is a rare and therefore very cheap. Now, if you want to see me play Katsu and see what his lines look like, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and watch some of my gameplay and I'll see you there.